So I will try to present his work. <laughs> <laughs> I will do my best. <laughs> oh, in fact, uh, I will show you um, one of the uh, multicentric study we did for the SFA um, about this specific problem uh, on stiffness, shoulder stiffness. Okay, so uh, I will present, so the, the, it's, um, this work, this is w really um, a specific work we did on uh, stiff shoulders and we were able to put together 235 cases with a long term follow up because this uh, study was conducted on three years long. And uh, why we choose to do such a uh, study is because when you, you look in PubMed, uh, you see that you have over 800 references on uh, shoulder stiffness over the last decade. And uh, there's no real study uh, on level one or level two studies, only level four studies. And there's no clear protocol how to treat those patients and how to consider them. So, uh, the first symptom in the center symptom is the shoulder is stiff. What is the definition of a, a stiff shoulder? So we think that the definition is a significant loss of passive range of motion, only passive, when the forward flexion is under uh, 150 degrees and the external rotation is under 20 degrees. But moreover, we think that uh, we have to consider the, the external rotation and when you have a lack of thir uh, th um, 30 degrees uh, between the, uh, dominant, the, the, si the stiff side and uh, the contralateral side, we can consider that we have a stiff shoulder. So we follow our patient during three years and we look at six different treatments and we try to compare them. But I will just show the, the, the results of the usual protocol, that's, that's um, rehabilitation under the pain level uh, uh, protocol with uh, an exclusive self rehab over pain limit protocol. So we took a long, long time to explain to the patient how to do, to work and how, how to do this and how to work over the pain, their pain limit. And then we look at the results of the endoscop uh, endoscopic capsulotomy. So put together, we had around uh, 50 or above patients in each groups. So the inclusion crit criteria were just a decrease of the, pass uh, the passive range of motion over 30 degrees compared to the contralateral side in f uh, forward flexion and external rotation, more or less internal rotation. We exclude all patients with bony lesions, fracture, arthrosis, and uh, postoperative stiffness. So we had a lot of paperwork done for this study. We had first, uh, that are collected from the surgeon side and he had to complete such a paper in the day one, your, uh, the day, day one, day uh, 54, month three, six, one year, and at the final f uh, follow up. And all the, um, uh, the, the uh, mobility assessed were done in the patient in uh, decubitus with the scapula locked and uh, we used a goniometric m uh, measurement. We also looked at the constant score for the patients from the beginning to the end of the study. Um, and we looked at the evolutions uh, during all this time. And on the other side, for the patients or the, um, the physiotherapist, they also had to complete uh, many papers. Uh, uh, and we looked for each working lesions, uh, sessions and every day during six weeks, imagine for the patients. <laughs> They all have signed a constant form to be sure that they will do the paperwork. And we looked at the day pain, the night pain, the functional limitations, the psychic conditions of the patient, how they feel during all this uh, protocol. And we also, for the exercise that were teached, uh, the difficulty to do this, those exercises, the pain they encounter, and the duration of their session, their own session. And um, we did this uh, through uh, uh, all, uh, uh, every day during six weeks and every week for the first three months and then uh, just one per, mo per month. Uh, 
the, ex the results are expressed with a day-by-day -day analysis during the first 45 d the days, then a week analysis until month three, and at six months, one year, and the final revision for all the patients. What are these, those results? First, there's no statistical difference at inc inclusion for all the three groups. This is the evolution uh, during uh, all the study. And you see that the three curves are looks similar. That means from the beginning, to the end for all the three groups. That's uh, regarding uh, the external rotation. You see that this is the most difficult uh, uh, range of motion uh, to regain, and especially in the auto re rehab group. But uh, at the beginning, during the first uh, 20 to 24 weeks, but after that, the, the patients also recovered and the final results in terms of external rotation were the same in the, for the three groups. What about failures? We mean failures in lack of uh, uh, mobility, but also a bad constant score under uh, 70. The, in all groups, the results were about 10% and there were more um, uh, failures in the uh, auto uh, uh, rehab group uh, at the last follow-up because the patients were bored to do their exercise every day and that's why we recommend at that time to have just spot uh, rehab uh, with a, a physiotherapist just to be sure that the all the exercise were still done and um, uh, um, still in time. So the conclusion is that the results are close to similar. The shoulder stiffness is not uh, is an illness really because it's a long time problem to get so, to be solved, and we have to follow or we or others have to follow the patients at least one year uh, and maybe more. And the patient education is one of the priority if we want to have a good results. The first question: What what about the pain? And this is the pain over more than a year. And you see that all three curves are similar in terms of pain. Even in the group that where the patients did their auto rehab over the pain. They were teach to do this over the pain. So the pain is not an argument uh, to limit the rehab in time. So the, we looked at many correlations and the fact that if the rehab is done under the pain limit. The, uh, the level of daily pain is correlated with the night pain. That's the feeling of the patient, of course. The functional limitation, the psychic condition of the patient at that time, the duration of the exercise. And on the other side, for the over pain limits, the feeling, the, the way the pain is filled by the patients is correlated to the intensity of the exercise, the duration of the exercises, the functional improvement, the psychic conditions. So uh, this de demonstrates that uh, when somebody else, uh, when the pain is uh, put by somebody else, the way the patient feels it is worse than if the pain is put on by the patient itself. So we feel better and we um, agree more with exercise that are done with pain when we put the pain ourselves on us. Uh, so the, the, the fact to say that do the urea uh, with no pain it's not a good idea. The good idea is to treat the pain and ask the patients to do his exercise over the pain. He will uh, regain his motion uh, quickly, quick, uh, quicker than um, if it's done under the pain level. What about the capsulotomy? Is it the gold standard? In this group, we had uh, 45 patients, and um, there were no difference at the final revision with the other techniques. No complication pair and post-op operative were observed, no recurrences, uh, and no uh, bad results that mean constant under uh, 70 points at the end. But that means that 
uh, if we do this kind of surgery, the result at the end will be the same. Maybe it's quicker than if we ask the patient to do his rehab during a longer time. But that's just the time frame that is different from the other groups. Otherwise, at the end, that's exactly the same uh, results. So the general conclusion for this that the first, uh, we need correct evaluation of the patients. And then to think that it's an illness and we have to follow the patients a longer time at least one year and maybe more. And three, don't be afraid of the pain. And we have to teach the patient that he has to be, uh, not to be afraid by his own pain. The pain applied by a physiologist to a passive patient is not acceptable. Pain managed by the patient himself when he is motivated is acceptable for the patients. And uh, what the, 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 the role of the self-rehab we think that we can take the best of the two worlds. We have to teach the patient to do the own exercise, and sometimes he has to go to the physiotherapist just to be sure that the exercise is done well, properly, and done accurately every day. Um, so we think that the, for the to take care of these patients, maybe we can have three steps. The uh, first step is the three months. Three months of intensive rehab, if possible, under supervision uh, by an up-to-date physiotherapist, a teach uh, physiotherapist. Uh, we need uh, uh, psychic uh, assistance and, and uh, pa uh, pain uh, drugs. And then the second step is the three to six months mark. If it's we observe a positive evolution, we continue with the self rehab protocol. Maybe there's a place at that time for uh, other uh, uh, solutions, just like nerve block or distension. And after six months, if still an evolution is observed, we can go for a self rehab protocol um, during a year. And at that time, if the patient is not motivated by his own uh, protocol, when or when uh, we observe no more evolution, we can go for a surgery. This is how we think we can have for the patients. So the conclusion is don't be afraid by the stiffness and don't be afraid by the pain. Thank you. <laughs>